Hello everyone and welcome to another video on Adam's tutorial series. Today we'll be learning uh, how to do a friction experiment in Adam's. So basically we'll be having an inclined plane and a crate on top of that. And we'll find out the angle at which the crate starts sliding on the inclined plane. So without any delay, let's get started. Uh, I'll start with a with the inclined plane I'll add it to a ground part giving the length as 100 centimeters height of 5 centimeters and a depth of 20 centimeters let's place it here okay turn on the visibility okay. next up would be the crate oh. Before that, put the marker here. Now we're going to add the crate on top of this. We'll take the length as 20 centimeters, height 10 centimeters, and the depth to be the same. Place it somewhere here. Okay. Having some problem with the working grid. Just zoom in a bit. Okay. I'll change the working grid to 10 mm. Yeah. Now I'll place it over here. There goes a crate. Alright. We have our model. I'll rename this part to crate. yeah before we go to joints and connections i would like to make a design variable that design variable will be responsible to responsible for lifting up this inclined plane at a certain angle and will carry out design studies and check at which angle the crate starts slipping okay so let's make a design variable we'll go to design exploration design variables uh, let it be db1 the standard value i'm setting it to uh, zero degrees for now set the minimum and the maximum i'll go from zero to 30 degrees okay i think we have yeah zero to 30 all right we have our design variable next up would be now as we uh, we want to do a parametric study henceforth we will be changing the position of the markers the orientation of the markers so i'll be replacing this z axis uh, remember that this is z x and z so 313 uh, notation for orientation so I'll be changing the first one. This will make the inclined plane to rotate about the Z axis. Uh, let me just copy the name over here. Yeah. Yeah. I find this a pretty swift way of copying the name. So marker one is here. So we'll change the angle. and make sure to put this whole thing in bracket if you don't do that there will be still this yellow box okay click ok now the second would be marker 2 so we can actually have this whole crate go to in category go to name and position and in this we'll change the orientation copy paste the same thing the design variable okay here we have it so i will just show you quickly that uh, if i change the design variable to let's say 20 degrees apply yeah so the whole thing just moves up 
right I'll just bring it back to zero okay okay so now we need to add a joint so we'll be adding a translational joint here uh, using two bodies and one location method my first body would be the crate and second body would be the ground uh, since the inclined plane is actually attached to the ground I will select the marker 2 on the crate as the point as the joint location and let's select the direction along marker 2 x yeah marker 2 x axis so we have the joint over here I'll just go back to wireframe view turn off the working grid to make it more visible all right so here's a tricky part now we need to actually uh, affix this whole joint to this uh, assembly you know the crate and the inclined plane assembly so how do we do that so you can see there are two different markers marker 3 and marker 4 which have been created marker 3 is already inside this crate so if the crate moves up and down the marker 3 will also move up and, up and down but for marker 4 we need to change the position right we need to make it dependent on marker 3 uh, in fact you can see that marker 3 and marker 4 are aligned here is marker 3 and marker 4 so what I can do is that I can uh, assign marker 4 relative to marker 2 you know marker 2 belongs to this crate so go ahead and modify you know you can just double click on this thing and in this location I'll just right click here and go to parameterize you can see expression builder open the expression builder okay remove this this is with respect to the global coordinate I will uh, go to this drop down menu and location orientation so the first one will be the location and it will be a relative to so select location relative to double click and this first one is the array that is the position of the uh, of the marker or whatever the object is with respect to it will be marker 2 so it will be exactly aligned with marker 2 at the same location as marker 2 click ok now we have set up the location time for orientation remember this uh, 1990 and 0 we are having here so this will be important otherwise the whole translation joint will move in a different plane so we are going to parameterize again expression builder I had copied it already go again to location orientation go down we have orientation relative to now now in the array we'll put the orientation as 90 90 and 0 remember this is z x z notation we have marker 2 okay so that sets up our translation joint and uh, the whole assembly is together i'll just quickly show you if i change the design variable let's say 25 apply voila so you can see the uh, translational joint the crate and inclined plane are all aligned as per our needs yeah i will just bring it back to zero again okay all right now it's time for a quick simulation you know so we haven't actually added friction to this i will just show you a somewhere around 30 it should sleep at 30 yeah so I'll show you a quick simulation that if everything is correct or not you want to verify that uh, one second 50 steps I just reset before running and start yeah so it's working perfect I will change the design value back to zero or you can actually keep it whatever you want it doesn't matter in fact now we need to add friction to the joint so i will go to connectors joint one double click to modify the joint and you have this last box over here for friction 
uh, you have the create friction dialog box open I will put the friction value as 0.3 for static and 0.25 for dynamic friction you want to check out bending moment and torsional moment these won't be required right now and the effect can be sticking as well as sliding we are keeping both click on apply ok and ok so we have added friction to this so we are going to vary the uh, angles so we need to create a design study we already have our design variable so I'm going to design exploration and in that we have design evaluation so click on the last one which is the design evaluation tools okay so make sure that you have already simulated the model once because uh, it will use this as the simulation script so I used one se I, uh, in my last simulation I had one second as the end time and in 50 steps so we'll be using the same thing now I'm going to do a study of the last value of measure so we haven't created measure yet we need to create measure so I will right click on this create go to part create and we have measure now what we're going to measure we're going to measure the acceleration so I want to measure when the acceleration becomes more than zero in the x direction so that would give me that the uh, crate is actually started to slide now I need to set the coordinate system I will select right click select marker 1 remember marker 1 is here attached to the ground and the direction will be x component you know uh, I can create another measure for velocity right click over here measure uh, the center of mass velocity in x direction again I will select you can also go to this database navigator go to ground select marker 1 you can also do it this way okay all right so we have two measures created over here now back to design study we will use the measure 1 which is the acceleration and our design variable would be dv1 right click go to variable guesses and we have dv1 now default levels is the number of trials you want to have within the range of the design variable we have 0 to 30 degrees so initially I will go with one degrees at a time so I'll create default levels as 30 degrees you know and that's uh, pretty much it I'm gonna start the design study now so before that I'll just slide it here so it's more visible yeah okay start and it has started so you can see that it's e, uh, with each iteration the inclined plane is moving up starting from 0 degrees to 30 degrees and uh, the strip charts are showing the values for each of the evaluations Yeah, so our design study is complete. Let me close this dialog box. Yeah, you can see. So we can either check the values from the report table, create a tabular report, click OK. And okay, so we have our design study table, and you can see these are the trial numbers on the left the iterations and uh, we have our uh, acceleration values and the design variable values so you can check that somewhere around 16.55 the value is 0 0.02 and 
and then around 17.58 it becomes 0.6 so we can say somewhere around 17 degrees is the inclination at which the crate starts to slide now you could actually do a more refined study by changing the minimum values and the maximum values so we know the range so we'll just put 15 to you know 18 Oops, 18 you know. and uh, we can carry out the design study again uh, this time let's use the velocity as the study objective I'll split this into 10 and I'll start so. so our design study is complete and we can go to the tabular data again okay i think it's pretty visible that uh, yeah around 16.667 is our magical number so that's the angle at which it starts slipping from an analytical solution we find out that uh, the actual angle at, uh, at which the crate starts slipping would be 16.69 so this value is pretty close and uh, yeah that's how you do a design evaluation study and design study this completes the tutorial hope you liked it